Hi, welcome to your Algebra 1 EOC review series. This video is going to focus on exponential functions and what you need to know on exponential. Okay, so we have parent functions that we deal with. We deal with linear, quadratic, and exponential in Algebra 1. And so we're going to go ahead and write this as b to the x, some base to the x power. But we're going to also accept 2 to the x power because b cannot be 0 or 1. All right, so there are two types of exponential functions that we deal with. The first one is exponential growth, and then the second one is exponential decay. So if we have our base function sub number times b to the x power, for growth, your b becomes a 1 plus r to the x power. So b has to be greater than 1 for it to be considered exponential growth. If it's not greater than 1, then it's decay. So this one will be 1 minus r, and that r is your rate, and it's generally a percentage. And so you'll have to convert it to a decimal. And so in this case, the B is going to be sandwiched between 0 and 1. It can't be 0 and it can't be 1, but it can be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, or a decimal in between there. Okay? All right. Some characteristics of our tables. What I want you to notice is our x values are all going up by plus 1. Everything is just, we're just counting up by plus 1 on all of these. Even on these over here. Okay, so what we're going to look at is what's happening on this side. What's happening to our y values? I can't look at that and see any relationship necessarily to the x values. So I'm going to try to look at what's happening in my problem. Well, I know 2 to 4 is plus 2, but nothing else is plus 2. But it's also times 2, and so I'm going to check and see if that works, and it does. So my table is doubling every time. So if you see a table that is doubling or being multiplied by a number, that is exponential. Same thing over here. I give it away with the one third. But multiplying by one-third is the same as dividing by three. So division and multiplication are inverses. So that works too. As long as it's multiplication or division, that's going to be your exponential functions. Okay, so our favorite word asymptote 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 okay so what an asymptote is 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 the line oh let me get my marker and this is important horizontal so it's the horizontal line where the graph has a barrier. It will never touch. It looks like it's touching it, but it's not. It will never touch it. Okay, so for exponential growth, there's our exponential growth equation right there. Let me fix it just a little bit. So I'm leveling out, going that way. So my asymptote would be here on the bottom. And see how it looks like it's going to sit on it? Okay, so it's where it sits. And that's going to be your defining or your, your, um, your range will use the asymptote, okay? For an exponential decay function, 
we decrease really fast and then we level off. And I can't seem to draw. It doesn't let me do that. So. Okay, so it's going to sit also on the same horizontal. And then if we had a negative one, it would just be below it. It would just flip it down. Let's see if I can. No. Okay, so, but the asymptote is where it sits. So if I had a negative, let's see if I can do a negative below. I think it's going to do this. Nope, backwards. Okay, well, can't do a negative and my board's having trouble. Okay, so it's where it sits, so it can't touch it. So if I have this one up here and the line's going to be doing this and leveling off, there we go. There's the up part. And so this one is greater than zero. Your range is greater than your asymptote. This one, your range is less than your asymptote. And so it's where the graph has a barrier. Okay, now label these. We've been using this one already. And again, I'm sorry for these. I didn't realize these were coming through. I don't think I can fix them right off. Let's see. Sometimes I can. It just takes just a second. get my little extra ones that I put in there. Okay, so we want to label this what it tells us, what our exponential function tells us. So your A value is your initial amount. So in our interest problems that we deal with with exponential growth, those are your uh, deposits, what you put into the account. Okay, those are your initial amount. A lot of times that'll be your population amount. Usually it's a type of money. Your B is your growth factor. Now, don't confuse that with the growth rate, which is a percentage, because we get that when we add or subtract the one value. And then the X, of course, is your inputs. And remember, growth is B is greater than 1. And decay, B is going to be less than 1 but greater than 0. So that is exponential functions. And now we need to look at domain and range of these because they do, it does make a difference on our domain and range. Okay, so anytime you have domain and you have answer choices that say y or f of x, just get rid of them, okay? Just get rid of them because domain is always your x values. Range is going to be the f parentheses x or some other letter parentheses x or the y value. So if you're looking for range, you want the y value. Now, I'm going to draw a line between these two so we don't get them confused because we're looking at two different problems here. Okay. If you have arrows on both sides, let me get my little highlighter here and show you what I'm talking about. These arrows on both sides. That means this graph is going to keep growing. It's never going to stop either direction. So my x values can just keep getting larger and larger and larger or more negative every time. And so if you have arrows like that, double arrows, your domain is always all real numbers. Always. If it has double arrows, it is always oral numbers. For your range, though, it's going to, remember that asymptote? OK, 
okay? It's sitting right here on this asymptote, and I'll get a different highlighter and highlight it. Let's try purple. Hopefully y'all can see the purple. But it's that horizontal line right there that it's getting close to, and it'll never touch. And so our asymptote is at zero. That's going to be our range values. Now, remember, it'll never touch it, so it can't be equal. So there's two ways they'll write this. They'll write y is greater than, because it's above the line, um, zero. Or they'll say all real numbers greater than zero. And my blue line messed me up. It'll be okay though. All right, so all real numbers greater than zero. So this one, it has, um, I'm gonna modify it just a little bit and I'm gonna put a dot right there. Okay, so this one has a stop. We're stopping at this zero comma 501, this point zero 501. And so our domain has an arrow on one side, not over here. And so remember, domain is x, and if we put our inequality symbols, the closed circles mean there's a line underneath it, and that's going to be at 0. And then we have an arrow. So what does an arrow represent? Well, that's our infinity. And so we only read from the x value. And this says x is greater than or equal to zero. And so we start at zero and we're going to keep getting larger and larger and larger. So it's at zero. Go ahead and put that dot on there. Make sure it's good and you can tell it's a dot. And so it's closed in. It's a closed in circle there, and then we have an arrow. So we're going to keep going forever and ever and ever. Now, our range this time, because we have that closed circle, again, it's going to be a dot this time. They're actually stopping it at that line. So it's going to be y is greater than or equal to, and where are we touching at? 501. And so we're starting at the y value here. And so we're at 501 and we're going up. The reason this one doesn't apply to the asymptote is because it is not leveling out yet. It's getting to 501 and then it's going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller to 500 actually. And so we're going to be greater than or equal to 501 because if we go, we can't go the other direction because we have arrows. So our lowest value is the 501. Now, if we did it the regular way with our inequalities like this, our lowest value is the 501. And it's the equal because it's the dot. And our highest value is the infinity because we have the arrow on the end. And look at our two symbols. We have the open, the two points, we have the open, and we have the open to the y. So it means the same thing, greater than or equal to 501. Board is being crazy. It won't let me. Let me try it over here. There we go. Okay. And as always, thanks for watching.